Hey everyone, Jessica Cabasi here. In today's video tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how I edit a couple of my wedding photos. And I, re I wanted to make this video specifically because I was editing these photos and I loved how the colors turned out. So I wanted to show you guys how I got it. Here's the before of this photo and here's after. So as you can see, just by using Lightroom, you can get a completely different look. And I'm going to go ahead and reset the colors on this. So I'm pressing Command Shift R. And now it's basic again. Okay, by the way, I did not write down any of the things that were in that photo. So I'm really just going to freelance this, if, if I may. So I'm just going to go ahead and do what I would normally do for any wedding photo. Now the first thing that I want to do is just add a little bit of clarity to begin. And I like to lower the highlights just a little bit. This was shot backlit, or like I attempted to shoot backlit here. As you can see, the sun's right over here. But I was in Detroit, and there's cars. So I'm trying like to survive while taking this photo. So yeah, backlit, backlit survival right here in this photo. So I'm going to up the contrast just a little bit, higher the exposure a tiny bit. Usually for the highlights and the whites, I usually lower them. And as you can see, this is what it looks like so far, just by lowering the whites and the highlights and adding a little bit of clarity. I'm going to pull up that vibrance just a little. And then as far as the curves go, I never keep these two endpoints where they are. I always kind of shift them downwards so that the white turns into a little bit of a gray. So as you can see, it goes from pure white to not so much. So now I'm going to construct this curve. The way that you fix this curve up is going to kind of dictate how your photo comes out. So curves is very important. I don't want to ruin the photo by making it too as you can see, it's looking a little bit too contrasted here. I'm going to fix that in just a moment. And I'm also pulling this up so that it's not pure black. As you can see, especially in her hair, if you take a look at her hair, when I pull this point up, you can see that it's not pure black anymore. So, of course, this is based on preference. If you, you know, you like that pure black and pure white kind of look, then go ahead and pull those endpoints all the way up. But I like a little bit of gray in here looks a little bit nicer so this is what we got so far it's nice it's a nice base it's very soft looking and i'm just going to higher up the, the exposure just a tiny bit another thing that i like to do is add a little bit of uh like an orange type of shadow to this and it just gives it a little bit warmth in the photo like as you can see did anyone notice that so if i pull this down to zero you can see that it goes it adds a little bit of color. See, I'll pull it up all the way so you guys can see. I'm going to put it to about 5%, very subtle. I just want a little bit of warmth in there. And you can see, I'll turn this on and off, and you guys can see the difference in that. And sharpening, I'm going to higher that up to about 36. I'm just tweaking a little bit of the curves. And again, I'm only using RGB. I'm not using any of these, and I wouldn't recommend it. You want to keep some of the natural colors for wedding photography. Um, I think I'm liking everything else, to be honest. One last thing that I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to go ahead and take this adjustment brush right here. And then what I'm going to do is make sure the exposure is a little bit high. So that's almost at one. Contrast is 44. And the color that I'm choosing is just, another, again, another orange color. And what I'm going to do here is add a little bit of color to the photo. And you'll see what this does in a moment if I calculated the settings properly. <laughs> Sound like Bill Nye, the science guy right here. And, you know, there's no scientific way of where you should place this, except you don't want to place it directly on the face. So as long as it's not on her face, you're good. Okay? You don't want an orange blob on someone's face. So let me show you guys with that. 
you see the orange color I just added? It just kind of made it like pop out a little bit and you can always adjust the exposure if you don't want it too much or adjust the contrast. But I'm going to keep it at 44 for the contrast. And again, that just adds a little bit of color. So that would be a way that I would edit one of these photos. And uh, I really hope that you like this photo. Uh, I'm going to quickly go over to another photo that I um, decided to edit. And I'm going to show you guys how I edited this one as well. So again, Command Shift R to reset everything. And I'm just going to freehand this, freelance, freehand, whatever. Uh, hiring the exposure, contrast. For this one, you know, I actually, for these types of photos, I shot this backlit as well, so the sun is right behind them. I don't mind that it's a little bit blown out. I feel like it kind of gives it like a nice effect. So I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep those highlights where they are right now. So again, I'm just playing with the curves here and hoping they will be in my favor. It's a Hunger Games reference. Okay. I'm <laughs> just going to stop with the movie references here. Look what that did already. I mean, did I even do anything, you guys? Really? Look at that. That looks great. Right? Okay, maybe... Okay, I hope it looks good. Uh, again, adding just a tiny bit of shadow like we did in the last one. And really, you can just select any orange type of color that you see here. Okay, so I'm going to up the clarity just a little bit. And I want to lower the saturation and then I want to hire the vibrance. So that's how it's looking so far. And one last thing that I want to do is again take that adjustment brush just so we, like we did in the last photo and just select a couple of spots. Especially like here in the middle, that would be a really nice spot. Um, if you do put too much, just hold the Alt key and then just erase a little bit. So I'm adding this brush wherever I see like a an opening like right here, right here, and right here. Just because it's already um, very light, so I'm just kind of adding on top of that. So that's how we're looking so far. I want to see if I can add a little bit more contrast. There we go. And I think that's looking pretty good. Like, I'm showing you legit how, I if I were to give my client something, this is how the photo would end up. So, that's before. That's after. Okay, and then real quick, we're going to go ahead and edit just one more photo. And... This one, I want to keep it a little bit more vintage. So I'm bringing down the top points of this RGB curve. And lowering the saturation. I do want to bring down the highlights just a little bit because, you know, she is wearing a detailed wedding dress. You want those details to show. That is very important for the bride. And I'm going to higher the exposure a little bit. I'm not going to do anything too crazy to this picture, to be honest. I just want there to be like a hipster, a hipster feel to this photo. And because this is not a close-up, I'm actually not going to add any shadows to this because I just want it to be a white wedding dress. And one other thing that you could do, you could take your green tab here and lower the saturation. As you can see, it lowers the saturation for all the greenery in the back. If you do want to change colors, that's something very helpful to know. Like, look, you could change pretty much how, what hue, the, the trees you want to be in the back. So I'm changing them just slightly. And by slightly, I mean, it's a whole new tree. Okay, here we go. So I think that looks pretty good, actually. So, I mean, I showed you how easy it is just to add a couple of wedding photos. 
And what I would normally do from here is paste these settings onto other wedding photos and simply adjust as needed. I really hope that this was helpful. I mean, I'm showing you guys exactly how I would edit my own wedding photos. I really hope you guys like it. Let me know if you want to see any more of these tutorials. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching.